Hi folks, welcome back to the Tabletop's Edge and our continuing playthrough series of the last Blitzkrieg campaign scenario. In this episode, we are going to uh, start at the beginning of the fourth turn of the campaign, the 19th of December turn. So far over the first three days of the German attack, they've managed to savage three American infantry divisions, the 28th, the 99th, and the 106th. But despite their successes, the Germans have not been able to achieve the breakthrough they were hoping for. The arrival of two American airborne divisions to the west and two infantry divisions along the northern flank have started to box in the German advance here and is narrowing their opportunities for, uh, for that breakthrough. We had mud last turn, which slowed down the truck-borne SS Panzer Divisions of the 2nd and uh, 9th SS Panzer Divisions as they entered the map. We'll see if the weather gets a little better uh, or whether we will continue to have some mud and slow their progress uh, to the west. Now, some of you may notice a little different background here on the opening video, and that's because I've had to transfer the game from uh, my primary game table over to another game table here. And I'm happy to say that I was able to achieve that without any mishaps. And in a way, it's, I think it's actually going to be good for this series because it's going to increase the likelihood of, um, of getting deeper into the campaign scenario than I originally had envisioned. Uh, since uh, it's now uh, being located on the big green monster here, it uh, should be able to remain up for an extended period of time, which will give me the opportunity to, uh, uh, to, to, to play deeper into the campaign scenario. We may even be able to get all the way through all 16 turns. So that's kind of some good news there. Uh, the 19th looks like it's going to be a rather action-packed turn, like each of the previous three turns. So I'd like to get right to it, but before we get into the pre-turn phase where we're gonna roll for weather and, and reinforcements and replacements, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the standard victory conditions of the campaign scenario, because I have not really focused on those much at all. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and show you that uh, to give you a little better idea of, uh, of, the, of the standard victory conditions because it's quite rare for the Germans to actually uh, make their sudden death victory conditions. And so far, if I had to say, based on prior experience, the way this particular game is going, um, it's, it's really going to come down to the weather, but it's not looking terribly good for the Germans being able to get 2nd SS and 9th SS off of the map. So let's turn and look at the standard victory conditions in the event that uh, the Germans fail to get those two Panzer divisions off the map and uh, the campaign ends up going the distance. Now the standard victory conditions in Last Blitzkrieg revolve around uh, geographic location control. Each side has a list of victory point locations on the map. The Germans have a total of 20 victory point hexes and the Americans have a total of 15. What I've done is I've marked on the map the uh, victory point hexes for each side. The blue dice mark American victory point hexes and the red dice mark German victory point hexes. The way the system works is that at the end of each turn, the Germans will count up the number of German victory point hexes that they control. And you'll keep track of that over the course of the game. When you get to the end of the game, you will take the highest single daily total for the Germans that occurs on or after December 26th. And then the Americans will total up the number of American victory point hexes that they control at the end of the campaign on the 31st of December. And then whichever side has more victory points will be the winner. Now you get victory points for controlling the victory point hexes that are your victory point hexes. So the Germans will get points for each of the hexes with a red die in them that they control, but they won't get any points for hexes that have a blue die in them. And then Conversely, for the Americans, the Americans will score points by controlling the blue dice hexes, but not the red die hexes. And I'll see if I can kind of pull back here and give you a little better perspective. Uh, it's going to be hard. The map is so big, it's a little difficult to get it all into one shot and still have it um, be large enough to where you guys can actually see what's going on. So we'll take a little tour of the battlefield. 
looking at where the victory point hexes are and the current uh, situation as to who controls them and, and who doesn't. So we'll start here on the southern flank, all the way in the, uh, in the south here. The Germans actually have two victory point hexes located in entry hexes here. This is the 4th Infantry Division sector here. And this is the secondary road that leads up to Dekirk. Now, I have seen the Germans capture uh, this victory point hex in uh, several games, actually, where they get off to a good start against 4th ID. It is extraordinarily difficult for them to maintain control of that victory point hex, however, as late as the 26th of December. Now, as we move sort of to the west a little bit, you'll see the Americans have one here in Ettelbrook. And they also have one further south here out uh, at Martelange, which is south of Bastogne. You can see Bastogne is a victory point hex for both sides. So whoever controls Bastogne will get a victory point for that, as well as Hufalis here further to the north. Uh, this is Wilts and Clairvaux. The American victory point hexes tend to be clustered in the kind of this north central area. You can see we've got three, four, five, six, seven, there's eight, almost half of the American or just over half of the American victory point hexes are located in the area between Urin here, Vilsalm, Trois-Pont, Stavlo, Malmedy, uh, Bullingen, Sanvit, back down to Bird, Royland, uh, and, uh, and Urin, I think I said. So, the Americans, by the end of the game, the Americans are going to need to have pushed the Germans back in the north and uh, have driven and cut them, basically cut them off here along the Ur. If the Americans can uh, can grab these hexes here, any of the Germans west of the Ur River are going to be in, in, uh, in bad shape. As we move a little further to the west, you're going to see, and especially in the north here, you're going to see the German victory locations start to come into play. Uh, all along the north here and out to the northwest, several crossing locations along the Meuse River, all the way down to Dinant here, that's Namur up in the corner there, uh, Sine, where uh, historically there was uh, uh, kind of the high tide of the German uh, advance reach there. And then again, further to the south and a little bit to the east, the uh, major road junctions leading out to the um, victory point locations here in the northwest. You have Rochefort, Marchand Faman, uh, La Roche and Arden, and uh, of course we've got Hoofelis and Bastogne that are going to be key to both sides as well as uh, Parker's Crossroads here. Currently, you can see the uh, Germans control a number of the American victory point hexes, including Wilts, Clairvaux, Uren, Bergroyland, Sanvit, uh, Vilsam, Trois-Pont, as well as a couple of their own. They've got the Twin Villages here and then uh, Camp Elsenborn right there. I think so far those are the only two German victory point hexes that the Germans have managed to, uh, to get control of. And while it may not look so good for the Germans right now, uh, we're still early in the campaign. The next three or four days, uh, it's pretty common to see the Germans uh, continue to push out to the west here. So usually uh, the, the second half of the campaign, the Germans are able to uh, get a hold of uh, several of their um, victory point hexes out to the west here. The problem is not only do they have to gain control of them, but they have to maintain control of them because none of this really counts until we get to the 26th of December, which is why I haven't really been giving a victory point hex count at the beginning of each turn because anything that the Germans hold now is going to be irrelevant. We're just going to have to look at what they're holding as of December 26th. So that's kind of a brief look at the standard victory conditions. Um, you can see We've got uh, Bastogne here. The Germans are approaching Bastogne. There'll be quite a bit of fighting in this area, I can assure you. Hufalis is uh, fairly lightly defended. Um, up here at Parker's Crossroads, you can see the 82nd Airborne has arrived, but there's really uh, a gap in the American lines between Parker's Crossroads and um, the northern edge of the Bastogne defenses here. So uh, will the Germans decide to try and drive through this gap? Are they going to be able to get there in time or are they just gonna try and bull their way through the, uh, the two American formations in their way? That remains to be seen. And uh, that's gonna bring us up to the start of the 19th of December. 
with the uh, pre-turn phase and we're gonna roll for weather. So let's do that now. Looking at the uh, weather chart, we can see that the uh, ground condition last turn was mud. So we'll roll one, uh, one die and see what we get this time. A four is going to give us uh, mud or freeze. Now it won't freeze until the 23rd of December. So we're looking at mud again, which is uh, bad news for the Germans and uh, good news for the Americans. Now with the atmosphere with mud, we've got a uh, pretty good chance, actually it does improve to a fair atmosphere, which means uh, visibility is going to be somewhere between one hex and any hexes. Let's see, four, that's gonna be two hexes of visibility, uh, fair atmosphere and mud. And while we're here, let's just go ahead and roll for the um, allied air points available. They will get somewhere between three and six today. The two means that the allies are going to get four air points that they'll be able to use. Uh, now let's go ahead and move on to the uh, replacements and uh, then the reinforcements. Looking at the replacement steps, the Americans are going to get only four non-AV replacements today. So not good news for the, um, for the divisions out there that are uh, just kind of barely holding on. Um, and tomorrow doesn't look much better. It's not really until the 21st where their uh, non-AV replacements really start to tick up. So only four non-AV for the Americans. Now we'll roll to see how many AV replacements they get. A five, that's a really good roll for them. That's gonna give them the full seven AV replacements. And I know 7th Armored Division is in desperate need of, um, of AV replacements. Now for the Germans, they are gonna get their standard eight non-AV replacement steps and we'll roll for their AV replacement steps now. And it's another good roll for them as well. The five will give them four AV replacements plus one Tiger point. So we'll look and see if they have any Tiger units that could use that step. Otherwise, it will convert to a regular AV step. So four and a Tiger, and the Americans receive seven AV. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look over the loss sheets and see where we wanna uh, divide those replacement steps up, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you where we ended up putting those steps here shortly. We'll start off by taking a look at the German replacements. Now, the 501st Schwedepanzerabteilung had suffered one step loss from breakdown, if you recall, last turn. So we had to use the Tiger replacement there to bring them back up to full strength, and that left the Germans with four AV steps. They've actually taken some pretty heavy AV losses in their Panzer divisions. So we placed two of the steps into 116th Panzer Division, placing one in each of the uh, Panzer battalions, and that's gonna bring the second battalion of the 16th actually back on map. And unfortunately for the Germans, you can't add more than a single step to a unit each turn. So it's going to be a couple of turns before second battalion is built back up to strength. And with the remaining two steps, we put them into second Panzer Division. Specifically, we brought back the second battalion of third Panzer Regiment, and we put uh, the last step into Kampfgruppe of Gutmann, bringing him up to, uh, to two steps. So you can see uh, first battalion of the third Panzer is at full strength. Kampfgruppe von Bohm has two step losses, while Kampfgruppe Gutmann only has two steps remaining. So second Panzer is down to about half strength in its AV units. And 1 16th Panzer is um, even worse off than that. Now for the eight infantry step replacements, we put two of them into Kampfgruppe Piper. We want to try and keep his Panzer Grenadier uh, units at uh, as close to full strength as we can. The third step, we placed one into 12th SS, uh, you can see they are still completely at full strength except for Kampfgruppe Bremer and their um, Panzerjäger uh, battalion, which is in support. The, uh, we put a fourth infantry step here in the second battalion of the second Panzer Grenadier um, regiment of uh, second Panzer division. And then we put two steps into Panzer Lair's Panzer Grenadiers, both battalions of the 902nd. The eighth and final infantry step we decided to uh, place here in the second battalion in the 915th to bring that back up to uh, to half strength. So now let's go ahead and take a look and see where the American replacements went. 
The Americans received seven AV replacements, and they've got one formation that is just crying out for all of the AV steps that, uh, that the Americans have to give them. That is 7th Armored Division here. We ended up putting one step each in one, two, three, four, five, all six task, fo task forces of the division. So that's going to bring Task Force Erlen back on the map, as well as Task Force Wemple at one step each. And then you can see Task Force Ray, has uh, that's been brought up to four steps, as well as Task Force Chappie. Task Force Fuller is in the best shape uh, with, uh, with five steps remaining. But you can see uh, 7th Armored is uh, kind of starting to wear down now. It's probably lost about half of, uh, half of the steps in the division. And with the last 7th AV step, we decided to place it into uh, Task Force Harper here of CCR of the 9th Armored. Harper was down to its last step. And as you can see, it's also the last combat unit of CCR that is on the map. And we'd like to keep every formation on the map, if at all possible. So we're trying to uh, tr trying to kind of boost Harper up here, and uh, hopefully if CCR can get someplace that's out of the way, maybe the Germans can leave them alone for a turn or two, they might be able to uh, kind of rebuild their units to a point where they can um, kind of re-engage. Now with the non-AV replacements, Americans only had four of them this turn, and They've got three infantry divisions that uh, are really hurting. So what we decided to do, in keeping with that same idea of trying to maintain as many formations on map as we, as we can, we, we went with the 109th uh, Regiment of the 28th Infantry Division. They are down in the south in the Dekirk area. Uh, second and third battalion had been eliminated this last turn. So we put one step into each of those battalions to bring them back on map. Their first battalion is only at half strength. This is a good formation, but it's a small formation, as you can see. They have action ratings of four, which are quite good. They do have some support. So this is a formation that will be of use if we can, if we can sustain it and keep it on map. It's going to need a couple of days uh, out of the front lines, if at all possible, to kind of rebuild itself. But then uh, we plan on... Uh, uh, inserting it back into the line, if at all possible. With the arrival of 10th Armor Division, the idea is uh, hopefully that 10th Armor could screen 109th now that the headquarters has withdrawn south and out of Dekirk, uh, give it a little bit of breathing room to bring their bring its battalions back up to strength. The first battalion is probably going to have to stay in the line somewhere in order to uh, in order to assist Tenth Armored. There just aren't that many American troops in that sector right now, so that's one reason why we're putting an emphasis on trying to keep 109th on map. The third one, again, same kind of uh, thought process. We put that into the second battalion of the 112th Infantry Regiment. Um, which brought that battalion back on map as well. It's been reduced to a single battalion also. All this one's the first battalion here is in a little better shape with four steps. It is slowly uh, retreating or getting beaten back, whichever way you want to look at it, towards Bastogne. If it can uh, link up with the 101st and CCB of the 10th Armored in the Bastogne area, uh, the hope is that um, it can be sheltered enough to kind of start to rebuild itself and then contribute to the uh, defense of the area down there. Again, it's another good formation, but it's, but it's small and um, easy to eliminate. With the last... Uh, non-AV replacement, uh, 106 could definitely use it. The problem is you do need to have a complete MSR. And um, also 106 is in kind of a precarious situation. I hate to throw good replacements into, uh, into a bad situation where they may just be used up rather quickly. So instead, we, uh, we went with the 99th Infantry Division, which is not really in, in much better shape, as you can see. They had one, two, three, Four of their battalions were completely destroyed. They've got a, another one on map, two more on map that only have a single step in them. So really, if you look at it, uh, the uh, division is down to about one third strength. They've, they've got the equivalent of basically one infantry regiment um, on map. So we put one replacement step in the first of the 393rd here. That'll bring another battalion back on map just to, uh, again, 
it's another unit that the Germans are going to have to track down and kill if they want to uh, wipe out the 99th entirely. So that's it for the replacements. Next up, I'll be uh, preparing the reinforcements, and once I get those in place, we'll go ahead and show you what is arriving and where. And then I think we'll be ready to dive right into the start of the uh, actual um, activations. Looking at the German reinforcements, they received two artillery points, both of which uh, were assigned to the 212th Fulch Grenadier Division here in an effort to give them a little more uh, capability of uh, pounding and grinding down 4th Infantry Division here. They also received uh, another uh, unit of Panzer Lair, some, uh, a uh, small uh, Stug Brigade, and also arriving with them is the Führer Grenadier Brigade. This is very similar to the Führer Begleit Brigade, which arrived last turn, but uh, it is not quite as good qualitatively. The big reinforcement for the Germans this turn is the 3rd Panzer Grenadier Division, which arrives in its entirety. This is a, um, a fairly average infantry division for the Germans, but it does have some uh, armor value uh, units, some AV units, as you can see here, and, um, and it is mobile although it's not going to be as mobile as it otherwise would be because of the mud. Most of the uh, infantry is truck-borne. And then finally, uh, during the assignments phase, we unassigned one of the artillery points that uh, was with 62nd Volsch Grenadier here in the Sanvit area. So that will be available for assignment in the next turn. And now for the American reinforcements. We're gonna start also in the south with the American reinforcements. They received this uh, 740th Independent uh, Armor Battalion, and we assigned that to the 109th Infantry Regiment of the 28th Infantry Division. So it arrived here next to the uh, headquarters where the 3rd and the uh, 2nd Infantry Battalion are reforming. And the question is, we've got the 1st Infantry Battalion stuck up here in Dekirk. Are the Americans going to leave the 1st Battalion there to try to hold the city, or are they going to try to extricate it, pull it back here to the 109th, uh, build this up a little bit and then try to find some other employment for them, perhaps a little further to the west. And uh, we'll see. The 4th Infantry Division continues to uh, receive a trickle of reinforcements. They received the 3rd Battalion of the 22nd Infantry Regiment here at their headquarters. And that is basically it for the Americans on the southern half of the, uh, of the battle. Most of the reinforcements, as you'll see momentarily, came in on the north side. The bulk of the American reinforcements this turn are comprised of the 3rd Armored Division. Uh, almost in its entirety, there are two task forces which will show up in another two days. But it, like the 10th Armored, has been split into two formations. You have Combat Command B of the 3rd Armor, which is arriving a little bit to the east here, uh, just north of Spa. And then the rest of the division is arriving here further to the west. Along with them is the, let's see if that glare can get out of the way, is the 84th Infantry Division, or more accurately, one regiment of the 84th Infantry Division. Like the 9th Infantry Division, it's going to arrive over uh, several days, but it will make its first appearance here well out to the uh, to the west. You can see uh, Kampfgruppe Spitze and Piper right down here to give you some idea of where they are coming in uh, in relation to the furthest German advances. Also in the north, the uh, 9th Infantry Division, speaking of them, they received a uh, 2nd Regiment as well as the Engineer Battalion for the, uh, for the division. So they now have two-thirds of the division on map in the area here. And these reinforcements are coming in at a good location. The Americans definitely need to uh, try to get something set up here along this northern shoulder to, uh, um, first of all, make sure 2nd and 99th don't get destroyed, but then to uh, form a line to stop the Germans and then eventually start pushing them back. That's going to, uh, I think, do it for the American reinforcements. And so we are ready to uh, roll for initiative and then get started with the action phase. Well, like most initiative rolls early on in a last Blitzkrieg campaign, this is going to be an important uh, initiative toss 
both sides desperately want to uh, gain the initiative and get the jump on the other guy by going first. So let's see how it uh, how it plays out here. The Germans will roll first, and they get a and they get a very poor roll of a four. The Americans uh, would love to beat that because uh, they've got an opportunity here, and. <laughs> They roll a five, which uh, will do it, barely. Uh, no sense, I guess, in wasting a good dice roll on that one. A five will do it. So first up are gonna be the Americans. And this is going to make things uh, interesting. They've got, um, like I said, they've got some opportunities here, but they're only going to be able to activate one formation. So they need to make sure that uh, they get the most out of that. Let's take a look and see what, uh, what they're gonna try and do here. First opportunities the Americans have is right here around Bastogne with the 101st. Now the 101st is not in a prepared defense yet and the Americans would desperately love to get it into a prepared defense before the Germans can really slam into it because if they go into the prepared defense, it will make grinding through their defenses much, much more difficult. As it is now, if the Germans hit them before they can establish that prepared defense, it'll be much easier to um, Push the, uh, push the paratroopers out of their positions and perhaps even reach and take the city. So that's one of the uh, higher priority formations the Americans are looking at. As we look further along in the south here, there may be some opportunities down here in the 7th Army sector on the uh, southern shoulder, but there's nothing super high priority as far as the Americans are concerned there. So they're not really looking to activate anything there. In the center here, we've got just sort of the remnants of CCR of the 9th, as well as the 112th Infantry Regiment. But um, while it would be nice to, to get these guys further west and more out of harm's way before the Germans can catch them, I don't think it's worth throwing away this opportunity just to try to save a couple of uh, small formations, one of which CCR really isn't all that great a formation. Just north of them, you've got 7th Armored Division here, which is literally tangled up with Panzer Lair, Kampfgruppe Piper, and 116th Panzer Division. And it would be really nice if these guys could get the opportunity to reestablish some sort of defensive line or position here before the Germans uh, slam into them again. However, I think the biggest opportunity for the Americans lies just to the northeast of 7th Armored Division and involves 106th uh, Infantry Division and CCB of the 9th Armored. Let's go take a little closer look at that. While the situation in the 99th and 2nd Infantry Division sector remains pretty critical, and again, we'd love to be able to activate at least one of the uh, two divisions here to form some semblance of a line to try to slow the Germans down. I think the bigger opportunity, and probably the biggest one for the Americans uh, this turn right now, involves 106th Infantry Division and CCB of the 9th. With Piper having moved on to the west from here, you can see there is now a gap between 1st SS and Piper in this area, we actually could get the combat trains for both of those formations back on map here, leading back to the American lines. Now the question is, we only get one formation to activate, so what do we do? Do we try and activate 101st or, or I'm sorry, 106th Infantry Division or CCB of the 9th and get them, uh, get them out of there and reestablished? I don't think so because again, the odds of, um, them activating may not be the best. They're also not in the greatest of uh, positions. Even if we could reestablish the MSR, it's doubtful they're going to be able to uh, put themselves in a situation to also then defend and hold on to that MSR. So the obvious candidates then get narrowed down to 1st Infantry Division here or 30th Infantry Division just to the west here. Both of these uh, could activate and ideally would link up with uh, with 106th and um, form a secure route for them to get their MSRs reestablished and uh, allow them to to hang on as they pull what's left of their formations out of the uh, area east of Sanvit. Now with 30th Infantry Division, they are a little further south than 101st, but we have a little problem here with this Kampf Group Piper. Uh, formation. If you look just to the west, 
the only thing standing between Piper's lead elements here and the rest of his Kampf group and the Orth River here, one of the last major barriers before you get to the Meuse, are the uh, ghosted 7th Armored Division combat trains. There's really nothing along this road. 82nd can try and shift up and throw some units on there, but that's going to open up as they shift northward. That's going to open up this other route to the south here. 30th Infantry Division is in the closest formation to where Piper is and has the best opportunity of interdicting his new path here. Uh, like water, Piper has been seeking the path of least resistance, and so far the Americans haven't been able to throw anything in his way to sort of box him in yet. Our best bet over the coming turn is going to be some combination of 30th Infantry Division, 82nd Airborne, and 7th Armored Division out there. And I think for that reason, because 30th is going to be concerned, at least partially, with keeping an eye on what Piper does, I think what we're going to do is task 1st Infantry Division here to drive southward and basically form a, form a north-south line here, tying in with 106th and CCB, essentially kind of relieving them. We'd like 1st uh, Infantry Division ideally to protect this highway, this primary road leading up from where the headquarters are now. So they'll want to move kind of south, south, east and establish a line over here. So let's see now if uh, first ID is up to the task. We're going to have to, uh, and we'll go ahead and activate them. And then we will, uh, with their trains on the map here, they are at optimal distance, they're ghosted. Since we are looking to move the formation uh, quite a ways, we are going to forego a prepared defense. So let's go right to the snafu roll. The 1st Infantry Division is um, not marked with coordination. They do have a fatigue level of 1, so that's going to be minus 1. They are not mixed. They are still under the game-specific minus 1, so that's going to make it uh, minus 2. Uh, they, their trains are at optimal distance, which brings it up to minus one, but they are ghosted, so back down to minus two. They're not crossing the streams, neither are they using tracks, so it's a minus two. Uh, that's going to mean a nine or better for a full activation, and uh, at least a four to, uh, to get a partial. And they just missed that full activation by one. The eight will become a six and a partial. So let's take a look at what uh, first ID will be able to do with this partial. Now, uh, with the partial activation, the headquarters has four organic and two assigned artillery points. That's going to be six. Halved is three artillery points available. And unfortunately, the partial activation leaves us with one objective marker, which is uh, and half movement, both of which are going to really impede the Americans' plans. Malmedy is uh, German-controlled, so in order to uh, enter Malmedy, the Americans are going to have to place an objective marker on that hex. I would have preferred to make an attack here on the 1st SS uh, Panzer Grenadiers out to the east, but unfortunately we're going to have to place the marker there. What that means is uh, we are uh, not going to be really engaging in any combat in this particular activation. So what I'll probably do is go ahead and, and do the movement, show you how far 1st ID can get. It's not going to be very far, spoiler alert. And then uh, we'll pick up at the end of the activation. We will see if there's any need to roll for fatigue, and then we will try to get a second activation for them. Here we are at the end of the activation. As you can see, 1st Infantry Division did not get very far. Uh, they were able to advance through Malmedy. 1st uh, uh, ID's headquarters actually shifted up the road into Malmedy. They did put the uh, 99th Norwegians in their trucks and uh, to give them some ability to get a little bit further down the road. They're now just five clicks north of the uh, headquarters of 101st and CCB. And unfortunately, even though we made no attacks, we do have to make a fatigue roll because we did place an objective marker, which was required in order to enter Malmody. Uh, it's anything but a one, and uh, we won't accrue any... Uh, fatigue. So we'll clean this up here real quick and we'll make that roll. And of course it's a one. So that's going to increase 
first ID's fatigue level to two. And now uh, for the important role, we'd like to try and get a second activation here. We're gonna need a four, five, or six. And unfortunately, they are saddled with a three. That's not going to do it. So first infantry division uh, has a, what well, can only be termed as a disappointing 19th of December. They have, however, uh, just about linked up with the previously cut off units. It's now gonna be up to the German reaction to see if this is going to be enough to uh, reestablish their MSRs and keep them supplied, get them pulled out of the uh, uh, hotspot, or if the Germans are going to brush aside uh, the, or the first infantry uh, division's attempt and uh, reestablish a, uh, a pocket here. So let's see what the Germans decide to do. The Germans have a lot that they need to do right now, which means they're gonna have to make some tough choices and uh, prioritize what they want to accomplish. Ideally, they'll have 2nd Panzer Division here, skirt to the north of Bastogne, basically along this road through Noville, up through Hoofelis and out towards Bertone and westwards, while they have Panzer Lair in this vicinity, either come down the road here and then turn north towards Park Parker's Crossroads, while 116th Panzer comes across and uh, goes up through Zalm Chateau and then westwards. And then finally Piper up here will head north and come across the road out here towards uh, Werbemont to the west. That's ideally. They still have 7th Armor Division here that they really kind of need to clean up. They also don't want to let 101st dig into a prepared defense because that will make those American paratroopers extraordinarily hard to, uh, to budge out of the way. And then up north, of course, they've got the 106th and CCB of the 9th that they had cut off. But you can see now that a gap has opened between Piper here and 1st SS, the units following on behind him. And it has allowed the Americans to drive south here and kind of reestablish a connection with the units that were previously cut off. So they're going to need to get the formations up here in the north, driving westward to reseal this northern side of the pocket here. And of course, Piper is tracing his supply back through Sanvit, and there are some Americans uh, uncomfortably close to Sanvit, so they really need to finish cleaning up this pocket. Those are all the tasks that are facing the Germans right now on the 19th. And the question is, which one are they going to get the most bang for the buck for activating first? Which opportunities are they going to have to let pass which tasks are they going to end up uh, having to be more difficult because they've decided to activate one formation as opposed to another one, allowing the Americans to uh, solidify their positions in that area. These are the kind of tough choices that you find yourself facing each turn in, uh, in Last Blitzkrieg. And I think what we're going to do is, um, you know, I think... Even though they're March coordination here, and uh, we probably aren't going to get a, uh, a, a great activation from them, I think we are going to activate Lair in an attempt to clean up 7th Armored Division here. They've got three task forces, four task forces actually, in this vicinity that could cause some real problems and headaches for them. So if the Germans can get the jump on 7th Armored Division and uh, ideally just complete its destruction, but at the very least get it out of this area, clean this area up. That will make it easier for their lead uh, units, the 116th back here and Piper to continue driving west and putting or keeping the pressure on the Americans. So with that in mind, I think the Germans are going to activate Panzer Lair first on the 19th. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens. All right, Panzer Lair's trains are on map. They are over here, but they are ghosted from the uh, headquarters having been uh, jumped by 7th Armored Division on the 18th. We have a complete MSR. We are not going into prepared defense, so that's going to bring us up to the uh, snafu roll. Now, they are marked with coordination, so that's going to be a minus one. Their fatigue level is one, which is going to make it minus two. They no longer get a positive modifier for the game-specific DRM. The Germans have pretty much uh, burned through all of their stockpile supplies three days into the assault. 
So all the German formations now are going to get a plus zero for their uh, game-specific diro modifier. The trains are at optimal distance, one, two, three, four, five, so that's gonna bring it up to a minus one. However, they are ghosted, which is minus two. They're not crossing any streams and they are not using any tracks. So we've got a minus two here for Lair's first activate, for their first snafu roll. And that minus two is enough to turn that eight into a six, which becomes a uh, partial activation for Lair. We will get rid of the coordination. And that's going to leave us with only one objective marker. They have two organic plus two attached artillery. So that's gonna give them a total of two artillery points. And now we're gonna to have to see uh, how we're gonna work around this, uh, this partial activation. Once we get a plan in place, we're focusing primarily on clearing these three American task forces out of that area right now. So once we figure out how Lair's gonna approach that, we'll pick back up and uh, get underway with the activation. Panzalaire has decided to place their lone objective marker uh, here. I don't know that it's going to do them a whole heck of a lot of good, but um, we shall see. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and place it one more hex further north here. We'll place it on top of brown here. They might be able to get some use out of it uh, later on in the activation. We're going to start off with the 2nd Battalion of the 130th Regiment coming up and doing an engagement here against Fuller. We've got uh, AB5 plus AR4 is nine to an AB3 plus AR4 is seven. It's gonna be a nine minus seven plus two on the engagement table with um, target is uh, real AV. Uh, there are no modifiers. So we'll see, that's an eight. Eight plus two is a 10, that's a target loss and retreat. That's gonna flip Fuller over to his move side and he will retreat three hexes. Be one, two, we'll put him back here. And that's the first fire event for the Panzers. That's gonna be one. They're gonna end up here one and a half where they will now engage Chappie. It's going to be the same thing. It's gonna be another engagement with a plus two on the dice roll. And the results are very similar, seven. Plus two is nine. That is a target loss and retreat. So he will drive Chappie back as well. Flip him over to his move side. One, two, we'll go here, three. And now Lair, or at least the uh, Panzer Battalion here is stopped for the turn having used both of his fire events. Now, now the question becomes, uh, what next? I think what we'll do is um, we'll have the Aufklärings unit here press up the road. They'll go here and engage, I believe this is Brown. Yep, Task Force Brown. This is gonna be again a AV4 plus AR5 is nine to an AV3 plus AR4 is seven. So once again, another plus two for the Germans on the engagement table. And this roll is not as good. Four becomes six. That's enough for both loss. And I think, um, well, you know, Von Falwa will engage them one more time for his second, or will he? You know, I think maybe, um, ta -ta -ta. do we have, I'm considering not engaging Fuller with his second fire event and instead uh, making a regular combat attack. I'm looking to see if anybody can get to uh, Sierru here to uh, uh, assist him. And I don't think so, not with the, uh, he's got the movement to do it, but he's, yeah, we can do that. All right, so I think Von Falwall will forego his second engagement and consider himself stopped here. And now we will bring up the second of the one, uh, 901. That's gonna be one, two. And now Von Falwall will make an attack here assisted by the Panzer Grenadiers. And we will use one 
of our artillery points as a suppression barrage. So the attack is going to be AR-5. They are dual, which is six. They um, are going to get seven, eight for the suppression. And they are assisted for nine dual. Uh, and there's no double objective markers. So nine and on the defender's side, they have an extra rating of four. They are dual, which is gonna make it five. And they are in terrain for six. And they are not in prepared defense. So nine minus six, that's gonna be a plus three on the combat table. And I think that's good enough. 10 plus three becomes a 13. 13 on the combat table is a D2 and automatic retreat. And with the automatic retreat, a, um, track units, tactical movers will flip to their move side and retreat three hexes. The Germans will occupy the hex here, and that's two losses for Brown. That's going to bring Brown a total of three losses when we take in the step loss from the engagement along with one from Von Falwa. I'm going to go ahead and break the activation here. I'm going to record all of the step losses for the Americans and the Germans, and then we'll pick back up. Now, that last attack here on Task Force Fuller that uh, inflicted two step losses on him, that actually eliminated uh, Fuller. So uh, rather than retreating, he is off of the map. Uh, Task Force Chappie is down to uh, half strength here. Fuller has four steps left, and uh, both Erlen and Wemple uh, were just starting to be rebuilt this turn. So 7th Armored Division is really starting to feel the effects of its stand against all of these German Panzer Divisions. I also went ahead and uh, finished up the uh, the activation. The uh, rest of the division just kind of moved up from the area here. The headquarters is redeployed. The trains have moved forward, so they are not going to, uh, they're gonna remain on their ghost side. Um, and now we'll go ahead and clean up. There are no isolation losses for uh, to inflict on uh, Lair. Uh, we do, however, need to roll for fatigue. They made an attack, so that's going to be a three or less, and they will increase to fatigue level two. And they rolled a four, so their fatigue stays where it is. Now they're going to attempt to get a second activation. They need a four, five, or six to do so. I think I'd almost rather have that four here than uh, on the fatigue roll. Uh, doesn't matter, though. They get a six. That's going to give them a second activation. They're in a little better situation now. Their trains are still ghosted. However, they did uh, lose the coordination. So for their snafu, they're looking at uh, fatigue level minus one. They're not mixed, plus zero for game specific. Optimal distance for the trains brings it back to zero, but then they are ghosted. So it's back to a minus one. So they'll need to roll that eight again in order to get a full activation this time. And that's exactly what they do. That's going to be comma seven, which is a full activation. That's two objective markers and full movement, except for their truck movement units like the headquarters here and the uh, Panzer Grenadiers. They only get half their movement because of the mud. So I'll uh, take a minute, figure out how we want to uh, continue pressing the attack here against 7th Armored Division, and then we'll pick back up. Lair has decided to place both of the objective markers here on top of Task Force Fuller, and they're going to have two organic and two assigned artillery points for a total of four for this activation. I think we're going to start off with the Pioneer Battalion moving up. One, two, three, and then second of the 901st is going to make an attack against Task Force Fuller assisted by the Pioneers. We're going to spend one of our artillery points in a suppression barrage. That's going to give us an action rating of four. We have red support for five. Double objective zone is six, artillery seven, eight, and assist for a nine. The defenders have an action rating of four. They are a dual unit, which makes it five, and they are in terrain for six. So nine minus six gives us a 
plus three on the combat table. And not a great roll. It is a six, which will become a nine. That is uh, no loss to the attackers because there's no prepared defense. And it is a situational retreat and traffic. So we will go ahead and Fuller's already on his move side. And he will retreat back here. Second and 901st will enter the hex. And I don't think I will bother marking it with traffic. We've got the um, double objective markers there to, uh, to remind us. And now continuing with the uh, activation, let's, um, let's go and bring the Panzer Battalion forward one and a half. He now has to do an engagement against uh, Task Force Chappie here. It's gonna be five, AV plus four AR is nine, two AV plus four AR is six. It's going to be a plus three on the um, engagement table with the target is real AV line. Wow, that was not expected. That two is a five, which is fire loss and traffic. And that's really gonna pose a problem for Lair now. Um, I think what we'll do is, um, Let's see, how many steps does, all right, that's going to leave second to one thirtieth with a single step. And uh, you know what, we will engage them again uh, with our second fire event on a plus three again. And it's a little bit better roll. That's gonna be good enough. That's gonna be target loss and retreat. So that's going to be another step from Chappie. And that's going to leave Chappie with two, but he's going to have to retire three hexes. One, two, three. We'll drive him back there. Lair is, uh, is now stopped as well as uh, in traffic. So let me go ahead and mark the two losses there. I'll get a counter to place traffic here because that is going to impact the rest of the activation. All right, with all of that marked, now we're picking back up with the activation. And uh, the traffic here is going to be a real pain. It's gonna force Von Falwa here to go into, uh, flip to his move side. He's gonna go here for um, four, back across the stream into Salm Chateau for eight, where he will have to engage Fuller. This is going to be AV3 plus AR5 for a total of eight, AV2 plus AR4 total of six. That's gonna be a plus two on the engagement table. And not a real good roll again. That's a seven. That's going to be both loss. And what does that do with Fuller? He still has plenty left. And Von Falwa, ah, he's down to two. But Von Falwa is going to try again at plus two. Second fire event, another engagement. And this one goes a little bit better. It's going to be fire or target loss and retreat. So Fuller will have to go back. Three, and I think we're gonna let's throw him here. And that is going to bring the recon to a stop. And now, now Larry's gonna have to take a look and see what they wanna do. Um, let me go ahead and uh, just mark the, uh, the losses here. And it looks like two more off of Fuller and one for Von Falwa. All right, with that out of the way, there are just a few more units. They've got three Panzer Grenadier Battalions left to move. So I think what we're going to do is that yeah, we'll start with second of the 902nd here. I'm going to flip him over to his deployed side. We'll bring him up here for one, two, and then three, four. Now, it should be pretty apparent here that Ray has managed to get himself cut off from the rest of the division. He's still two, four, six, eight within the command radius of the headquarters, at least for now, but he does not have a safe path. So that's going to present some problems uh, for Ray in the upcoming activation. We're going to go ahead and move Lair's headquarters forward here. And I think we're going to, with the other two Panzer Grenadiers, we're going to send them one, two, three, four. And lastly, first and the 901st, they're going to mount up in their half tracks. They're going to come across one, 
and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half, eleven into here. And what this will do by sweeping around the left flank of seventh armored, he has now with his zone of control here on this road as well as his secondary road uh, has cut the MSR of uh, seventh armored division. So that's going to make. Uh, their activation that much more troublesome unless the Americans can somehow uh, cut away out. Their trains are on map and they are up here, but uh, they will, if the situation does not change before 7th Armored Division activates, these trains will come off. So I think that's going to do it. Actually, we're going to flip over the trains here for Lair and... Um, now, you know what? We... We are going to fire one of our artillery uh, points as a uh, destruction barrage outside of combat, so we're limited to using just one point. We're going to shoot uh, that at Ray with 2nd of the 902nd spotting. He is in terrain, so it'll be a 4, 5, or 6 to score a hit. And the 5 is a hit, so that's going to be one more step loss for Ray, but he still has, uh, he still has plenty, so... That shouldn't be an issue. And now I think we will go ahead and clean up the activation and then we will have to roll for fatigue. They made an attack again, so it'll be a uh, three or less to increase fatigue. That is a two, which means their fatigue is gonna tick up to uh, fatigue level two. And that's gonna do it for Panzer Lair on the 19th of December. You can see they didn't, they didn't advance very far. They moved basically from this area here up to, uh, up to the area of Salm Chateau. But they did heavily engage uh, 7th Armored Division over the course of the day. They've got a single step left in their Panzer Battalion, and Von Falwa is down to two steps. So they've only got three AV steps left in the whole division. They are getting worn down. They've put 7th Armored Division, though, in a um, pretty precarious situation. So it'll be interesting to see how the Americans decide to deal with that. And when we're looking at the overall scheme, ideally... In this game, you'd like to be able to assign a different road to each Panzer formation. So we've got 2nd Panzer Division down here along this road. Then we've got uh, Panzer Lair. Looks like they're going to come across here. It's opened up a gap behind Panzer Lair for the 116th to come across this road here. So we've got one Panzer Division, two Panzer Divisions, three Panzer Divisions, each driving westward on their own sector along their own road. And then you can add in Piper up north here coming along this way. So there's four prongs of the um, of the German attack moving westward, albeit rather slowly here with Panzer Lair. Now, while they didn't really continue thrusting westward that much, they did clean up 7th Armored here and they have pushed them back. So it's for the Germans, it's always kind of a balance between let's push forward as fast and as far as we can, but does that really do you a lot of good if, as you push forward, the Americans then just come in right behind you, like we see happening up here with Piper and the, the gap uh, between the follow-on formations. So, as a German, I've played this a lot, as both sides actually, but um, as the German, I tend to want to... Um, not necessarily secure the uh, the penetration as I go, but I'm not necessarily 100% uh, committed to getting as far westward as I can. I will try and open the hole because the two formations that really matter, at least for the sudden death, are right back here. And until those guys get up close to the front, um, punching a hole and just driving like crazy seems a little counterproductive to me. But uh, enough of the babbling, let's get back to the action with the Americans now. For the Americans, I think they're still kind of focused on trying to do what they can for 106th and uh, CCB up here. And so I think despite the um, disappointing activation from First ID, I think we are going to try to, um, try to get 
one of these two activated and at least get their MSR reestablished. Now the question is which one, 106 or CCB? CCB is real small, it just has these two units, but they are more mobile, which means they've got a better chance, if we do activate, of getting out of uh, the uh, forming pocket down here. The 106 has three battalions down, four battalions down here. Uh, only really the motorized battalions got any realistic hope of getting out. Uh, when you look at the headquarters cards, you will see the uh, the trains for both of these formations are off map. However, CCB of the 9th is already sitting on an MSR blocked level one marker. So I think they may be a little more critical uh, formation to try to save. So we're gonna attempt to activate CCB of the 9th armored. And you'll see here on the headquarters card, they've got the uh, MSR blocked one. And the way this is gonna work is, again, we'll go back to the sequence of play. First thing, are the trains already off the map? Yes, they are. So we either place an MSR blocked marker or since it's already on there, we're gonna to have to flip this over to uh, level two. Now, because the uh, trains are not on the map, we also cannot uh, establish a prepared defense, which we're not interested in doing anyway. So we're gonna go straight to the snafu roll. Now they're gonna have a minus one for their fatigue. They're uh, not marked coordinated and they're never mixed, but they get another minus one for the game specific, which brings it to minus two. Then we're gonna skip down to the bottom section of the table uh, modifiers chart. The combat trains are off map. Yes, they're, they're still off map, even though we will be able to place them. Uh, at this point, they're not yet on the map. So that's gonna be another minus three. And then we have an MSR blocked minus two, which is another minus two. So that's gonna be minus seven. Uh, this is, again, this is not uh, not very pretty. That means they're gonna need a 10 just to get a partial. So it's not looking good. However, we will be able to fix things even with a failed activation. And boy, they just missed it. Uh, that seven or that nine becomes a uh, two and that is a fail. So what we're gonna have to do first is um, Let's go ahead and we are able to place the trains on map. So that's going to, the question is where do we want to place them? We're gonna go right up this main highway here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It's still an optimal distance here that will have to go on ghosted since it's considered movement when you place them on the map. Um, but that should then remove the MSR blocked. And um, let me, you know what, let me double check that and make sure, let me see exactly when that MSR blocked marker comes up, because that's going to have some impact on isolation losses. You can see the command radius is only five hexes, one, two, three, four, five. See, uh, the uh, 14th Armored Battalion here, they're fine. They are within command radius and they have a safe path. The 27th Armored Infantry Battalion is outside of command radius, but they do have a safe path, so they will suffer some isolation losses. The, if the MSR blocked marker remains on for the isolation phase, that's going to increase those losses. So that's why I want to double check this now real quick before we continue. As I suspected, the MSR blocked markers are only removed in the preparation phase, and that's uh, if the uh, trains are on map. So. They're going to be saddled with the blocked marker here for the isolation step. Uh, they, like I said, they are, they have a safe path here back to the HQ, but they are out of command radius. So that's going to be one step loss, and then it's going to be an extra step loss for having the MSR blocked marker. So that's two steps from the 27th Armored Infantry Battalion. That's going to leave them with a single step remaining. And uh, there's no roll for fatigue uh, since the formation didn't do anything. They were just merely able to uh, place um, the uh, trains on map. And you know what, just in case they don't get a second here, we'll go ahead and flip those over to their deployed side. Now, uh, we're gonna try and get a second activation with them. It's going to be a four, five, or six. And fortunately they do get a six. Now, 
we go back to the um, preparation uh, step of the of the activation. The trains are in fact on the map now, which means we can remove this MSR blocked marker, and it's going to change the um, the snafu modifiers. So now what we're looking at is we still have minus one for fatigue and minus one for the game specific. However, we can now look and we'll get a plus one for the trains being at optimal distance, but unfortunately that's gonna be canceled out by the trains uh, being ghost trains. That brings us back down to minus two. We're not crossing the streams and we're not using any tracks. So we've gone from a minus, what was that? Uh, minus seven for the first activation to merely a minus two now, uh, which greatly increases the odds of us being able to get at least a partial. Let's see what happens here. And the seven becomes a five. So that is indeed a partial activation. And let's see, we're probably, I don't know if we're gonna place any objective markers or not. Um, I think right now we are in, um, we are in kind of save yourself mode here. So it's gonna be half movement for the, uh, for the units. Let's see how far we can get the armored infantry battalion here. They're probably best off staying on their um, move side with their attack movement of 16, that's halved to eight. Moving into the clear for tack is two, I believe, for open, yes it is, it's two. So we can go two, uh, three, rolling is three for, um, we got two, three, that would be six, and then seven, eight. Put them into Amblev there, one, two, three, four, five. That's also gonna put them back into command radius. Now for the armor battalion, now because they, um, because they also are looking at half movement, we're gonna go and put them back on their move side to get them seven and well, the question is, where do we want to put these guys now? I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They'll do that. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll leave, um, I think we're going to have to leave the headquarters there. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five. We might be able to move them back a hex, but. I don't know if that's gonna do us all that much good. Um, well, yeah, why not? We'll go back one here and then we'll flip the trains off of their ghost mode, which will help next activation. Now we do have to roll for fatigue. There are no um, isolation losses, fortunately, for the first time, I think, in a couple of turns for these guys. So fatigue is gonna be a two or less because of uh, the second activation. And they rolled a three, so no fatigue level. So as it stands, Combat Command B, now they're not out of the woods yet, but they have reestablished an MSR and they have been able to pull back their units to a uh, moderately safer position, at least for the time being. Uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what happens as the Germans decide to pursue them. One quick note about CCB of the 9th before we move on. I made a mistake. I could have and should have used one or two of the air points available to the U.S. this turn to uh, provide some air supply to them. As it turns out, with that uh, initial snafu roll, if I had put just one uh, air point in, uh, towards them as air supply, they would have actually gotten that partial on that first activation and would have saved us a, a couple of step losses there on uh, the armored infantry battalion. So important thing to remember, just uh, it's one of those little things that in the end may or may not make a big difference in uh, in a game uh, this size. You'd be surprised at uh, how those little things can add up over the uh, over the course of the game. Now moving on, I think the Germans are uh, going to try to keep their Panzer spearheads pushing west as best they can. They're gonna come down here in the south and we're gonna activate 2nd Panzer Division. 
Now the Germans, at least with 2nd Panzer Division, they are really concerned with being able to grab the uh, crossroads here at Bertone. And as you can see, the 101st has a battalion sitting in the village. And uh, fortunately, the American preoccupation with the um, cutoff units in the north has given the Germans the opportunity to go ahead and activate 2nd Panzer here before the uh, 101st has an opportunity to establish a prepared defense. So we are, uh, the trains are on map and they are all the way back near uh, Clairvaux here, uh, just one hex west of there. We're not using tracks, it's along the highway. We're not gonna go into a prepared defense. So right to the snafu, they have a fatigue level of two that you can see, so that's minus two. They're not coordinated. They don't get anything for the game specific anymore. The trains are at optimal distance, which is gonna bring it to minus one. They are not ghosted, we're not crossing the streams, and we're not using track. So straight up minus one for second Panzer. And it's close, but uh, that four will become a three, which is just enough to get a partial activation. That's going to give them, uh, let's see, three organic plus two assigned. That's five halved, rounded down. We'll leave them with two artillery points. Uh, but more importantly, only half movement. So I don't even know if they're going to be able to reach Bertone in this uh, activation, let alone make an attack and try to capture the village. Um, we're going to get a single objective marker. And let me go ahead and, and take a look at things, see if they're even going to be able to get out to Bertone or if they may have to uh, modify the plans for this activation. We'll take a look at that and then we'll, uh, then we'll get started. And as I thought, you know, with that half movement, that's going to keep the Germans from getting to where they want to get to this activation. We are going to place the objective marker, though, because we want to capture Hufeliz, and it is a German VP location here, as you can see. So in order to enter it, we need to have an um, objective marker there. And I think we're going to start off first with the bicycle battalion here, or... Yeah, Bicycle Battalion, Motorcycle Battalion. We're going to have them uh, move up there. Half movement because of the mud. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and a half. So they will enter Hoofalis. That will jump the trains of uh, CCR of the 9th. That's going to send them 10 hexes back up the MSR. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just west of Bertone. And now also there is a possible bridge demolition there that I need to roll for. Uh, the question is, do we want to use the one Greif team that we have remaining or not? Uh, this is kind of a, it's a u very useful bridge, even though it runs north-south on this main highway. Um, and I think though there may be a couple more bridges we might want to save that Greif team for. So we're just going to go straight up. Uh, bridge demolition. One or two, it's okay. Three or better, it's destroyed. That's a four, so that bridge is going to be blown. I'll go ahead and um, let me grab a bridge blown marker and then we'll continue. Well, the loss of that bridge up there at Hoofalese is a, uh, is a bit of an inconvenience for the Germans. Actually, it's probably a little bit more than an inconvenience, but um, They'll just have to deal with it moving forward. And since um, our planned objective for the day is pretty much out of reach of the division, we'll um, try our best to get everybody moving in that direction while um, still maybe securing our flank and making sure, maybe doing what we can to inflict some losses on the Americans in the Bastogne area. We'll have the Panzers here in Noville come down here. That's going to force a stopping engagement against Task Force Desabri from CCB of the 10th Armored. It's uh, AV5, AR4 is 9 to an AV2, AR3, 5. So it's a plus 4 on the engagement table. As expected, that 7 becomes an 11. That is a target loss and retreat. So that's going to drive Desabri back. Uh, 1, 2, 3. Three and I think they 
may follow up here and um, just debating whether or not I want to use a second to try to engage the support here of the 101st Airborne, but I don't see any real big point in that. Uh, they don't have much support. They've got two steps for the division right now, and uh, it's only a, an AV of two. So um, now I think we'll forego that, and we'll leave 1st uh, Battalion of the 3rd Panzer Regiment right there. Uh, next up, let's flip Von Bohm over to his deployed side, and we're going to bring him forward here for one, and again, it'll be another stopping engagement, this time against Task Force Cherry. AV2 AR5 is seven versus an AV2 AR3. It's a plus two on the engagement table. And a seven is just what the Germans needed. That becomes a nine. That is a target loss and retreat. So Cherry's gonna go back three hexes. Um, I can either place him south of the river here, which is in a bit of an inconvenient spot for the Americans, or I can stack him with Desabri here. Um, I hate stacking in this system, generally speaking, uh, particularly with AV units, because uh, that means a single engagement can force the entire stack to retreat. I think what I might do, I may go ahead and put them south of the stream here. They still... It's not the best location for them, but they haven't activated yet, so they'll be able to move into a better position. But in the meantime, they are still exerting a uh, an AV zone of control onto the main road leading into town, so it could be worse. Uh, that was one for Von Bohm. Uh, does he keep heading west, or do we get him going north? Because the we want the division to uh, to head in this northwest direction generally at this point. Um, if I get him down in here, he'll be vulnerable to American artillery. You see, he's he's not a yellow armor symbol, so it's just like shooting at uh, uh, a Panzer Grenadier Battalion here as far as artillery goes. But I think we're going to keep him moving to the northwest. That's two, three, four, five, six, uh, and a half, six, Seven and a half. Well, I guess we'll put them there for now. Let's see what else we have. Um, second battalion here. They are in the process of rebuilding. Actually, they only have one step, so we don't really want to have them engage the Americans this for another turn or two. So that's one, two, three, four, five. All right. We'll hopefully get him relatively out of the way. Now, we're gonna to have to put these guys in their trucks. That's gonna be one half, that's one, two, three, four. And we'll leave them there in Noville. I think we might move the headquarters up there. One, two, three, and a half. And the Pioneers, one, Two, leave them in Bursi. And just to keep the Americans from getting any ideas, we'll leave 2nd Battalion of the 2nd Panzer Grenadier Regiment uh, in Majore just to prevent them trying to sweep in or drive up the road behind and get in behind 2nd Panzer. And then that leaves uh, Kampfgruppe Gutmann here. We'll flip him over. Give him eight movement points. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or do we want to go that far north? Maybe. Uh, we're going to bring him back a little bit. That's seven, six. That's five. Send him down the railroad tracks. Railroad tracks cost two for tack. 
So that'll be seven and we'll leave him We'll leave him there. I think that's the entire division, except we're going to bring the trains forward. Bring them up from Clairvaux. One, two, three, four, five. We'll place them here along the road. So we've got our MSR running back from Noville to the highway and then up the N12 through Clairvaux and back to the supply source. All right. We um, have no isolation effects. We do have some fatigue to roll for. It's going to be a two or less because of the engagements that, um, that they were involved in. Uh, three means they are fine and they will remain at fatigue level two. Uh, the question is, do we try for a second activation? And I think we definitely try for the second activation because the whole point of getting these guys going as early in the turn as we did is to... Um, get to Bertone before the Americans can dig in. So we need a uh, four, five, or six to get a second activation. They get it with a five. The snafu roll is going to be a little bit different than last time. We are minus two for fatigue. Uh, goes to minus one for the optimal distance, back down to minus two for the um, ghosted train. So it's a minus two now instead of, I think it was a minus one for the first activation, so minus two. And that is a failure. So, second Panzer Division is going to be done. However, we will be able to flip the trains over and I will go ahead and put these guys on their deployed sides just in case the Americans decide they wanna uh, try to move up and engage them make it a little more difficult. And what are we gonna do here with the, yeah, we'll put these guys on there. Deployed side as well. And second Panzer is done for the turn. So similarly to first infantry division for the Americans, we have a uh, major formation that only manages to get a single partial activation here on the 19th. You can see fatigue is uh, kind of playing a role in that as well as the, uh, the Germans no longer getting that um, plus one or plus two for the game specific. So things may start to slow down for the Germans here, but uh, both sides are going to be struggling to get uh, full activations, I think, for a while, at least until some of their formations can uh, get a turn or two of uh, to do recovery activations and get some get some rest and reduce their fatigue level. Okay, back to the Americans now. The Americans are going to take advantage of the continued uh, break that the Germans have given them here in the north to uh, attempt to reestablish the MSR of 106th Infantry Division. And in the process, we may see if we can try and gum up the Germans' plans as much as possible. Now, the uh, trains are not on the map. As you can see, they're here on the card. But that does not prevent 106th Infantry from going into a prepared defense. So long as they don't have an MSR blocked marker, which they do not yet, and they have at least one artillery point, which they do, and it's the initial activation, that's all you need to enter a prepared defense. Now what this is going to do is it will have movement because the best we're going to get is a partial, which it may not affect these guys down here very much at all. They're locked in, at least... This battalion and this battalion are locked in. The only ones it would affect would be these two battalions here. And again, they're backed up against the uh, the river here, so they're not going to get very far, even if they had um, their full movement points. So I think we are going to uh, reestablish or enter a prepared defense as part of this activation. And then that's going to bring us to our snafu roll. Now with the snafu roll, we're looking at uh, fatigue zero. They are not marked with coordination. They're not mixed. They get minus one for the game specific. Their trains are not on the map, so the MSR is not complete at this point. So we drop down to combat trains off map. That's going to be another minus three for a total of minus four. However, like we talked about before with, the, uh, with CCB that I forgot to do is I can use some of the American air points in order to provide a positive modifier to the uh, to the snafu roll. So we'll spend two of the four American uh, points to bring the snafu modifier up from a minus four to uh, only a minus two. 
And um, let's see, is there any, oh, we don't want anything else. Yeah, I, I think we'll I think we'll just spend the spend the two for now. So we have a minus two on the Snafu uh, roll for one hundred six, which is not bad, all things considered. And that actually would have given them a full activation, but as I said, I don't think the uh, full activation would really have gotten them much more than what they're going to be able to get with this uh, partial. So. With that said, we're going to get one objective marker. We'll have to figure out where to place that and then take a look at um, what we are going to do, what kind of position we're going to try and get the division uh, back into here. So let me go ahead and do that as well as mark the prepared defense on the uh, HQ card and then we'll, uh, then we'll take a look at the activation. All right, having marked the prepared defense, uh, they have four organic and two attached artillery for a pretty decent total of six, which is gonna be halved uh, down to three because of the prepared defense. And then we've placed the trains on map in the same location that CCB of the ninth uh, trains were up the uh, road here, just east of Malmedy. And we get one objective marker and we've decided to place it right down here. Now you can see we've got uh, two battalions here that have a safe path back to the, uh, back to the headquarters. And actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These four are all within command radius. Now, unfortunately, sec uh, second of the four twenty fourth and first of the four twenty third are both sort of blocked in and don't have that safe path. First of the four twenty third is uh, down to its last step. So, if I were to do a voluntary retreat, it would simply uh, lose that last step. So, we're not going to do that. We're going to leave them in place. Uh, but the odds of them uh, getting a safe path reestablished are pretty small. So we're probably just going to have these guys go down swinging, which is why we placed the objective marker here. We have a couple of German uh, battalions with extra ratings of three, which are a little better than the Fallschirmjäger two. So we're going to use two of our artillery points and have first of the 423rd spot for barrage against first of the 293rd, which is in the open which means they're gonna need a three or better to inflict a step loss on them. And that they do, that's two step losses on first of the 293rd. Now, we're going to uh, fire our last artillery point in a barrage on second of the 293rd. They are in terrain here, which means it's gonna be a four, five, or six. And they roll another four. So they went three for three. At least they went down swinging. Um, next up is second of the 424th. Now, he still has a decent number of steps left. So I think we're going to try and get him out of his situation here. Um, he can't move Zock to Zock. I don't necessarily want to bring guys down here uh, to help sort of break him out. So we'll just do a voluntary retreat, get him back three hexes, one, two, let's see, I guess maybe we'll go here. And then um, he will suffer a one-step loss. Second of the 423rd, we're gonna flip them over to their deployed side. It's gonna give them two movement points. We're gonna go one, two. And now this is gonna be a, a bit of a problem now for the Germans. Because they were able to uh, sort of move into these hills overlooking the city of San Vite there, they're exerting a uh, zone of control into both the city here and along the N12 highway here. This is going to cut any MSRs that are running through San Vite, which happens to be Piper's MSR, because his MSR is coming down the secondary road from the west. So currently, Piper's MSR is cut, which means the Germans are going to have to have to move these guys out of there if they're um, not going to take Piper's combat trains off the map, and that's going to that's going to slow him down um, pretty quickly. And unfortunately for the Germans, because the 106th was able to establish a prepared defense, it's going to be a lot harder to move those guys out of there now. Now we've got uh, two other battalions, actually two other battalions here. We've got a couple out west by the HQ. This we'll just move these uh, engineers down here and again they will cut that same road that Piper's relying on with their ZOC a little bit further to the west and I think we'll take third of the 424th and just kind of move it into the headquarters hex here. Now 
Uh, we've got one last holdout way out here on the Schnee Eiffel still, second of the 422nd. He's down to his last step as well. So he's there's not much we can do with him. Uh, he'll be coming off at the end of um, at the end of the activation, but uh, still they managed to hold out for three and a half days, which um, which actually is is no small feat. Now the question is: first of the 424th, do we leave him where he is? He does have, like I said, a safe path back to the headquarters at least for now, and he is sort of protecting the uh, the eastern flank of second of the 423rd. It's going to make it a little bit harder, a little bit more difficult for the Germans to, to get at him, to clear him out. He also cannot move up the road here because that's ZOC to ZOC, and we've got a, uh, a river behind him going into uh, forest terrain, so this would cost four movement points to move here. He's only got two on his deployed side. We would have to flip him to his move side, make him unprepared uh, to put him in that hex. Um, but you know what? I think we're going to do that. I know they're probably going to get clobbered here in uh, later in the turn when the uh, 62nd and 3rd Fallschirmjäger activate, but at least in from this position, they still have an opportunity um, if they suffer retreat results to uh, uh, to not be surrounded and trapped. They, they could still uh, manage to escape and help reform some kind of a line here, maybe just uh, along or just west of the N12. I think that's going to do it for this first activation. We will implement some um, isolation losses. The only units that are going to suffer are first of the 423rd. He's going to lose his last step. And then finally, second of the 422nd on the Schnee Eiffel uh, will lose his last step. But it's not bad, actually, because if you think about it, this activation, the Americans exchanged one infantry step loss for three step losses on the Germans. And that's an exchange ratio that the Germans really cannot afford to, uh, to suffer. So now it's um, a fatigue roll because we placed a, an objective marker that's going to be anything but a one to avoid fatigue. And unfortunately, they do manage to increase their fatigue just like everybody else has so far this game. That's going to give them a fatigue level of one. And now it's a long shot, but... Um, Considering that we don't have to worry about any isolation effects right now, I think it would be very helpful if uh, we could get a second activation. It is going to require a six, though. So let's see. Uh, let's see if they let's see if they get lucky. No, not quite. So that's going to do it for the uh, 106th Infantry, but uh, not an unproductive day for them. Actually, they've uh, made things a bit stickier for the Germans here, and uh, they've managed to uh, to continue to, to bleed the Germans. So let's see what the Germans decide to do about the situation here around San Vite, if they're going to address it now or, or try to just uh, delay that and push that off. Back to the Germans. For the Germans, uh, there's really nothing super pressing down here in the 7th Army sector. Uh, even further out west, uh, now that 2nd Panzer Division has uh, has activated, uh, there's nothing really pressing going on in the Bastogne area. It'd be nice if uh, 560 could activate and, and uh, try and uh, take these guys out before they have a chance to get away, but that's not necessarily uh, going to have a huge impact on the course of the battle. Uh, we do have this major problem now at uh, Somme Vite. But both of the American formations in the area have uh, already activated, which is going to uh, mean that we might be able to take our time a little bit, at least, with 62nd and uh, 3rd Fallschirmjäger. We'd like to get Piper moving, but with his MSR cut, uh, that's not probably the smartest thing to try to do. Let's see if we can reopen that uh, MSR for him before we try to activate him. So I think that uh, takes us up north, and the Germans do need to get some more units way out here to the west. And um, they've got a couple of formations here that they're going to want to try to get out there. I think what we're going to end up doing is um, 
Let's activate 12th SS Panzer and see if we can get them going, especially since the Americans have several formations up here in the north that have not yet activated, so we'd like to get the jump on them. Let's go ahead and activate 12th SS Panzer. Activating 12th SS here. You can see the uh, trains are on map back here and they have a complete MSR. We're not gonna go into prepared defense, which takes us straight to the snafu roll. As you can see, they have fatigue zero and they have uh, zero for the game specific. They are not mixed or marked with coordination. Trains are at optimal distance for plus one. They are not ghosted, they're not crossing the streams and they're not using track. So a plus one for 12th SS. Uh, that's not good. At five, plus one becomes a six. That's only a partial for uh, 12th SS. And that is not going to help matters much. So I think what we'll do is that's going to give us one objective marker. And let's see, they have uh, four organic and seven or three assigned for a total of seven. But that's going to round down uh, to three artillery points for the activation. Let me take a look here, see what uh, we want to try and salvage out of this particular um, activation. What we were hoping to do with 12th SS here is to drive it along the road here through Buningen to the uh, main highway, then behind and south of 1st SS and get them out to the west here uh, towards Malmedy where they can, um, again, run into 1st Infantry Division and, and hopefully close the trap around 106th and CCB again, but that's not going to happen with half movement for sure. So um, let me take a look here. And uh, once we get a plan in place, we'll go ahead and pick up with the activation. All right, we've decided to place our objective marker here for 2nd SS. That'll cover 3rd of the 394th as well as uh, these units in here. Although the focus of this activation isn't necessarily going to be attacking the Americans, it's going to be getting 12th SS as far to the west as we can. Uh, we are going to start off with the um, Jagdpanzers here. They're going to do an attack by fire on 3rd of the 394th with their first fire event. They're unprepared, which means they cannot take advantage of um, the um, uh, support that the division has. And they are in the open, so with an attack by fire, that's a four, five, or six to inflict a step loss. The three just misses. And having done their version of a drive-by, they will continue moving on. Uh, it's also because they're in prepared defense, they have no zones of control here. Let's be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I think we'll have uh, first Panzer Company come up here. They'll move here for one, and they will also take a shot at uh, the third of the 394th with their first fire vent. And that is a Four, which will hit. And that actually eliminates the last step of 3rd uh, to 394, so that will clear them out. That's going to help the division quite a bit. That was one. I'll go two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Now, we're going to mount up the Panzer Grenadiers here in the half tracks and bring them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let's see our two, three, four, five. Headquarters only has uh, half movement, and it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Unfortunately, and. Uh, let's see. We'll move our Panzer Grenadiers here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pioneers 
here. One, two, three, four, five and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for Bramer. Um, so they do, they're in their line of march. They've made it, uh, at least made it to the, uh, the east-west road there. They're not quite, uh, we really wish they would have gotten a little bit further to the west. Now, the question is, do we move the trains or do we leave the trains where they are? Oh, almost forgot about this guy. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Um... As it is now, they'll be tracing back across the pa uh, tracks here, which would be a minus two. Their only other option would be to move it down onto this main road here where they would be ghosted and crossing the streams, which is this, which would total a minus two as well. At least up here, if we leave the trains where they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, they're still within optimal distance. And uh, they may be suffering a minus two, but they won't be um, imposing any crossing of the streams on other formations. So I think we will leave the trains where they are. Um, that's going to do it for this first activation. We do need to roll fatigue. They uh, made two attack by fire, so two or less. And that's Pretty typical for this particular game. That's going to increase their fatigue level to one, which is not, not going to help if they manage to get a second activation, which is what we're going to try and do now. It's a four, five, or six for a second activation. And they do get that six. Now the snafu modifiers are going to be different. Um, uh, fatigue is going to be a minus one. They're not coordinated, mixed, no game specific. Uh, plus, uh, I'm sorry, uh, plus one for optimal distance brings it back to even. They're not ghosted, they're not crossing the streams, but they are using tracks with poor traffic ability. That's going to be a minus two. So net minus two to the roll. They're going to need something uh, good here. And that's not good, but it is good enough. Five minus two is three. That's good enough for another partial. Again, not um, not what they wanted, but uh, at least they are still moving westward. Let's go ahead. I'll take a look at what we want to do with the um, with the partial activation here, and then we'll pick up with the action a little further to the west. All right, having shifted a little further to the west. Uh, you see they're going to have three artillery points yet again. We've placed our single objective marker out here. And um, now we will uh, proceed with the, uh, with the activation. I think we're going to start with um, the Panzers. And they're going to have to go one, two, three. That's going to stop them because of the AV Zoc from 3rd Battalion of the 26th. And the Panzers will engage the support here. We've got um, AV3 action rating 4 for a total of 7. The Americans have an action rating of 4. And the 1st Infantry Division has... Um, actually, they have a um, tank destroyer support with an AV of 4 and they have multiple support. So that's gonna be four plus four plus one is nine. So the Germans are actually rolling at a minus two here on the um, uh, target is support. They're gonna need an eight in order to drop that support. And they get what they need. That nine becomes a seven. That's going to temporarily drop the support there. And we can continue moving. Let's see, that was one, two, three. They're gonna move down here and they're going to press their luck again with the uh, 99th Norwegian 
which has been attached to First ID. They also have support. They're going to attempt to drop their support. This one is going to be a little different, however, because while the Germans still have a seven total, the actual rating of the 99th Norwegian is only two, and uh, that'd be plus four is six, plus one for multiple support. So this is a straight up roll on the uh, target is support line. The roll is a 10. That just misses inflicting a uh, step loss, but it will drop their support as well. And it will stop the Panzers since that was their second fire event. All right, so, so far, so good for the Germans. Now, um, and they have, by the way, uh, just cut the MSR for um, both of the uh, 106 and CCB, although they could potentially trace uh, across these tracks uh, up to uh, Stavlo and around this way, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not quite going to be able to make it there. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right. I'm going to have to use, okay. All right, I think what we're going to have to do is go one, two, three and a half. Now, Bremer is going to use a fire vent to try to place an objective marker here on the Norwegians. He needs to roll his action rating, which is five or less. And he does that, which will place a second objective marker there. And uh, let's see. If we do that, that's still, yeah, that might work. Okay, so then Bramer is going to attack the uh, Norwegians here. And we're gonna spend one artillery point and we will have the uh, Panzer Battalion uh, assist his attack. So we've got an action rating of five. He's dual for six. Uh, no double objective zone. Um, seven, eight for the suppression barrage. Nine for the assist. The defenders are looking at an action rating of two. They have no support. They are uh, not in a prepared defense, but they are in terrain. So that's a three. So nine to three, it's a plus six for Bremer. And it's a mediocre roll, but uh, it'll get the job done. That's going to be D1 and an automatic retreat for the Norwegians. Let's go ahead and put Bramer into the village here. They will, well, they're already on their move side, so they will go back to the HQ refuge up here at Malbody because they are one, two, three, four away. Let's see, he's there, he's there. Let me put them, uh, put them back here, and that's going to do it for Bremer. Uh, da, da, da. Now, let's see what else do we have? What we can do here? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes and no. Um, tell you what, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna mark the um, mark the loss here. Actually, there was no loss, was there? Yes, there was. There was a loss here on the Norwegians from the combat. Let me mark them and then uh, then we'll continue with the activation. Picking back up, uh, next up to the Jagdpanzers. They're gonna go one, two, three. They're gonna conduct a drive-by here uh, with their first fire vent. I believe they are in terrain. They are in terrain, so a five or six to inflict a step loss. And they manage that. That's gonna be one step loss on third of the 26th. And then he will continue moving. That was one, two, three. There's gonna be four, five, six, and seven, which will jump the headquarters of CCB of the ninth. 
armored. I think what they're going to do is jump into the pocket and um, relocate to their armor battalion hex. That is going to mark them coordinated. So let me go ahead and do that. Their trains are already ghosted and they were not in prepared defense. Let me go ahead and get a uh, dig out a coordination marker. Well, it was fun while it lasted, but it looks like the Germans have um, shut down the, or closed off that trap again for both of these poor formations. Um, continuing on now with 12th SS, they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And the um, Panzers here are going to do uh, use both their fire events for an attack by fire on the uh, third of the 26th. Again, they're going to need a five or six to get a hit. And they do manage to get one. So that'll be the third step loss for third of the 26th. They're down to half strength. And now they will, Germans are gonna follow that up. One, two, five, with the Panzer Grenadiers making an attack. They're gonna spend one artillery point in a suppression barrage here, and they're gonna be assisted by those same uh, Panzers. The action rating is only a four, they do have red support, which makes it five. They get six, seven for the suppression uh, and eight for the assist. The defenders have an action rating of four. They do not have any support. They're not in prepared defense, but they are in terrain for five. So eight to five, it's a plus three on the combat table here. And that's an okay rule, not great. Uh, seven plus three becomes 10. It's no loss for the attackers uh, because there's no prepared defense. It's a situational retreat and traffic. So not really ideal. The Germans would have liked to have maybe inflicted a step loss on them. Now that's a uh, situational retreat. They can go one, two, three to the headquarters refuge on the far side of the headquarters. The Panzer Grenadiers will enter the hex and I'll mark it traffic, but I don't think it's going to really matter. And now it'll be a matter of just bringing up the rest of the division. So rather than uh, watch you, uh, have you watch me count like, uh, like I did last activation, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish up the movement here and I'll show you where the 12th SS ends up. As you can see, the headquarters has uh, moved forward here as uh, have the rest of the uh, division. They are on their move side and uh, 12th SS, the Panzer Grenadiers, most of them only have a two action rating while uh, on their move mode. So they're a little vulnerable, um, but the first infantry division has already activated this turn. So we'll see who gets the jump next turn. Now, one thing, I guess we do have one artillery point left and even though they're finished, they can still spot. So a uh, third of the 26th is going to use this last point in a destruction barrage on first of the 26th. They are in uh, terrain, so that's gonna be a four, five, or six. And the three is a miss, so no effect there. We'll clean up the rest of the activation. And it took them Two partials to get out here. It's not quite as effective as it could have been, but I think they did get the job done as far as interposing themselves between the relieving American forces here, as well as cutting off uh, 106th and CCB again. So let's see if they gained another uh, fatigue. That's going to be a three or less because of the uh, attack they made. And sure enough, the fatigue starts to mount for them. They are up to fatigue level two now. That's gonna do it for 12th SS. And I think at this point that will do it for this episode. We've got, I think, 39 formations left to go and I'll probably just kind of divide up the rest of the turn into three more episodes. So we get four episodes per turn, uh, looking at about 13 formations in each of the upcoming turns. 
So the 19th is off to a bit of an interesting start. Uh, Panzer divisions are starting to slow down, and not just the Panzer divisions, but also the Americans here as the um, wear and tear of the uh, constant combat starts to take its toll. It'll be interesting to see what happens here in the rest of the 19th. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching again today. and. We'll